The same thing that makes this question we're about to do really wonderful is also what makes it a little bit monstrous. When you look at this question, um, I kind of compare it to like the Tour de France. I don't know if you are into cycling at all, but the Tour de France is this, you know, multi-stage race. It goes for more than three weeks and you cover hundreds and hundreds of kilometers. It's just really long. And when you have a look at it, you can see the length of this question. Um, there are a lot of very, you know, sections you have to be very patient and persevere through to get there. Uh, but not only is something like the Tour de France long, um, it also has these uh, very famous climbs that are really hard. And this question, uh, it binds together some really challenging concepts that are they're quite disconnected uh, normally in our brains. And you kind of have to combine them and see how they uh, fit together in order to solve this entire question. You know, for starters, um, you can see De Marvel's theorem, you know, a pretty classic result in complex numbers um, starts out the question, but then we get into polynomials and you have to also use some fancy trigonometric identities in order to get to the end of this. So buckle in, uh, you might need to have like uh, something to eat and drink nearby because this is going to take some time, but let's see if we can start off and make some progress with this. The question begins, use De Marvel's theorem to prove the identity and then it has to do with cos 6 alpha on the left hand side and then a bunch of cos alphas and other coefficients and powers on the right hand side. So we're being uh, prompted to use De Marvel's theorem, so that's where we're going to begin. So what is De Marvel's theorem? Let's remember, um, it's a general result for raising complex numbers to a power. So we would say um, what that looks like for in, in general terms is that uh, if you take some complex number cos theta plus i sine theta, uh, and if you raise it to an integer power n, uh, you can say that all that does is it actually uh, multiplies all of the arguments, the theta in this case, by n. So you get this result here. Now, for the question that has been presented to us, it's got uh, a 6 in there on the left hand side, cos 6 alpha. So I guess what they're suggesting is we take an argument of alpha and we take an n of 6. That's going to give us the result that we want. So I'm going to start off uh, with uh, actually what's written on the right hand side here because it's simpler. Uh, I'm going to say uh, by De Marvel's theorem, cos 6 theta, or alpha rather, because I think that's the angle provided to us, plus i sine 6 alpha equals. Um, and then it's just going to be uh, the complex number with alpha as an argument raised to the power of 6. Now at this point uh, you would be understood, uh, it's understandable to kind of wince at this because we are used to expanding things to the power of 2, sometimes the power of 3, we seldom go beyond that. But using our knowledge of binomial coefficients, we absolutely can handle this so long as we take care and do everything methodically. So I'm going to start to expand this, but just before I do, um, obviously there's going to be a lot of terms here. Um, you know, a, a binomial raised to the power of 2 has three terms in it, a squared plus 2ap plus 2ab plus b squared. Um, something raised to the power of 3 has four terms. This is raised to the power of 6, so they're going to be seven terms. It's going to be a lot of different things flying around, and for that reason, I'm going to write it in a slightly unusual way. I'm going to write the terms in two different columns. In a minute, you might be able to see why. So as I write down these terms, let's see if you can anticipate uh, the reason for my particular arrangement. Let's begin. When we're doing this binomial expansion, the first thing that comes in is the binomial coefficient, 6c0. Uh, and then we're going to get a, six, uh, a sixth power um, of the first term, which in this case is cos alpha. So cos alpha to the power of 6. Then comes the next term. So we get the uh, binomial coefficient. Uh, we have one less power of the first term. And then we have one more power. Uh, of the second term. So it's, uh, you know, this one's decreasing, this one is increasing. I promised I would put answers in two columns. So the next one is going to be 6c2. Um, the cosine is climbing down, so 6, then 5, then 4. And then I've got i sine alpha, it's being squared. Uh, where am I up to? Okay, 6c3. This bit, you can sort of be on autopilot as you're expanding this. Uh, cos cubed alpha, i sine alpha, that's cubed. So we're kind of in the middle now. Plus uh, 6c4 cos, what am I up to? Squared alpha, i sine alpha. Alpha, I'm now to the power of four. Our powers, of course, are our indices rather, they're always adding up to six, two plus four. Um, 
Then my next one, there's second to last, 6C5. I've only got one cos alpha left. And then I'm gonna get this to the power of five. And then finally, I've got 6C6. And then no more cosines, I've only got the I sine alpha. That's raised to the power of six. Okay, so this is a lot, right? And uh, I, I've not expanded anything. I've literally just uh, not expanded any of these particular terms is what I'm saying. I've just done the initial expansion raising to this power of six. But uh, what am I going to do with this? Well, I want you to have a look at what's on the left hand side and compare that to what's on the right hand side. When you uh, compare these two and look back at the original question, uh, clearly the thing that I'm interested in is cos 6 alpha. This thing here, which you can see appearing on the left hand side, it's the real component of the complex number on the left hand side. So as a consequence of wanting just to focus on this, I can somewhat ignore all of the things that are imaginary. And this is why I wrote things into columns. If you have a look over here, the things that I wrote on this right hand column, right, uh, all of these guys over here have an odd multiple of, not odd multiple, an odd power of i. Um, you can see this is i to the power of one, so that's gonna have an i when I factorize that, it'll be imaginary. This is i cubed. Now, i squared is negative one, so um, that will, i cubed is equal to negative i. So again, when I factorize it out, there'll be an i out the front, it's going to be imaginary. And the same thing happens here. i to the power of five is the same as i to the power of four times i, i to the power of four is just one. So it kind of cancels out, leaving you with a single i that comes out the front. So what I'm trying to say is uh, all of, can I get the right spot? Yeah, there we go. All of these terms here um, kind of become irrelevant to me because they are the imaginary component that relates to this. The ones I'm really interested in are these real components over here. Because they have uh, even powers of i, uh, they are going to give me just real results when I start doing the simplifying. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, uh, I'm going to just compare the real parts. Comparing the real parts. Now, I'm gonna kind of do this um, a little bit cheekily. Um, on the left-hand side, I of course have the cos six alpha. Um, but in order to get the right-hand side correct, I need to actually do um, a bit of simplifying at the same time. You can see, I'll just leave the binomial coefficients for a second, we'll, we'll do that afterwards. Um, this guy here, cos, to the power of six alpha, it never had any i's in it to begin with, so I'm just gonna leave it like so. Um, but here, uh, when I'm comparing the real parts, there shouldn't be any i's floating around, right? So instead of writing i squared, I'm gonna substitute that for minus one. Uh, and then when, instead of writing i to the power of four, I'm gonna substitute that for one. And lastly, instead of writing i to the power of six, I've looped back to being minus one, okay? So what have I got here? The first one, this is gonna be minus, that's the i squared that you might remember, uh, six c two cos to the four alpha, and then I get a sine squared alpha, like so. Um, I then get, uh, let me zoom out a bit, um, my next one is six c four, and uh, we said this i to the power of four is just one, so I get my cos squared alpha, and then I've got sine to the power of four, alpha, and then my last term is going to be 6c6, C6. Um, that's that i to the power of 6 is, is that minus sign, which I should have written out the front there, um, and then I just get sine to the power of 6 alpha. Okay, great. So this is an improvement. Um, I'm already not dealing with as many terms as I had in the original expansion, um, but so there's a few issues with this, aren't there? Um, for starters, um, I haven't dealt with my binomial coefficients yet, 6c0, 6c2, and so on. And the other thing that my mind is um, sort of realizing is on the right-hand side over here, the result I'm trying to prove it doesn't have any sines in it, it's all cosines. So I'm clearly going to need to do something uh, with these terms here, this sine squared, this sine to the power of four, and this sine to the power of six. I'm gonna have to address those and get them in terms of cos. So we'll come to that in a second. Let's deal with the binomial coefficients. Now, uh, anything, any integer c0 is just gonna be one, um, and any integer c itself is also gonna be one, but maybe you can't remember um, these 6c2 and 6c4 because it, you, know, you haven't looked at them for a while. So, whoopsie daisy, on your calculator, uh, what you wanna do is find the uh, six, and then the, the c is sort of above the division there, so you need to go shift 
um, to get the C and then if I go 6C2 um, then you might be able to just make out if that's going to focus properly. There we go, 6C2, that should give you 15. Um, and so um, you can actually also verify that 6C4 will give you the same result. So what I'm gonna get is, um, this will be one, this will be one, and then these two are 15. So let's simplify that. Uh, here comes the one, cos to the six uh, alpha, minus 15 of these guys here. Uh, 15 of these as well. And then uh, one at the end there. Okay, so this is looking good. Now, we already sort of signaled for ourselves that we were gonna to have to replace these sines with cosines. The most helpful identity here, of course, is gonna be the Pythagorean identity. Um, you might remember it as sine squared plus cos squared being equal to one. But clearly, if we want to remove sine squares out of it, then the way to rewrite this in a more helpful form is to subtract cos squared from both sides. So this is what I'm going to substitute into each of these spots. However, I do want you to notice, uh, if you look closely here, um, the sine squared alpha, um, I can just substitute that directly, but this sine to the power of four alpha, this is sine squared alpha squared by my index laws. Uh, and this guy over here is gonna be sine squared alpha cubed, also by index laws. So what I'm gonna have to do is substitute this one minus cos squared into here, and there'll be some further expansion that I have to do, but that's fine. All right, let's have a go. So I've got cos to the power of six alpha minus 15 cos to the four alpha, and then here comes my first use of the Pythagorean identity, one minus cos squared. Uh, here comes the next one, so I've got a cos squared here, and then one minus cos squared gets squared. That's me doing uh, this substitution into here. Uh, and then finally, I've got uh, one minus cos squared, and that's being cubed. Okay, so you can see here, um, I might just for the sake of clarity, I'll change these to another color. Let's make them pink. Um, I can uh, do this expansion here on the next line. I'm just gonna wanna take care with it because I can see there's lots of, there's minus signs, um, there's lots of terms that need to be expanded. So I'm gonna take some, um, some care with that and some caution. So this is gonna get expanded. I'll write that in red when I get to it. And this is also going to get expanded. I'll write that in blue. All right, uh, let's begin chipping away at the boulder. So cos to the six alpha. Um, here, I've got this term multiplied by one in the first instance, so that's minus 15 cos to the four alpha. And then, just watch out, because there's a double negative here, right? Minus 15 cos to the four alpha is multiplied by minus cos squared alpha. So the negatives will cancel, giving me plus, and then 15 times one just gives me 15. Um, and then if you have a look closely at the indices, you've got to the power of four here and then to the power of two. So adding those indices together, you get to the power of six. Okay, now for this next part here, I'm, I'll fit this first part on this line. I've got the 15 cos squared alpha coming out the front, but then one minus cos squared alpha squared is going to be um, one minus two cos squared alpha plus cos to the power of four alpha. So hopefully uh, you agree with that expansion there. Um, you can see um, this is my a squared um, minus two ab plus b squared, okay? Uh, and then I'm coming to this one at the end. There's a minus sign just right at the front there. So I write that down first. And then here comes my expansion um, with me cubing this. So again, I'm using my binomial coefficients. We cube things relatively frequently compared to raising things to the power of six. So I know my binomial coefficients, my row of Pascal's triangle, it's gonna be one, three, three, one. So here comes my expansion. I'm gonna go one, um, and then I'm gonna go, you gotta watch out, right, because there's a minus sign here, so that comes along for the ride. The first one's gonna be uh, minus three cos squared alpha. Then I get a plus, because the plus minus keeps alternating. The next binomial coefficient is three, um, and then this cos squared gets squared, so that gives you cos to the power of four alpha. Um, lastly, um, you can see I'm now cubing this. The binomial coefficient is gonna be one. So I get uh, minus one because uh, that minus comes from this minus being done three times. Um, and then there's cos to the power of six 
alpha. So I know I did that really quickly. Um, if this expansion here was the one giving you trouble, um, what I would suggest is you go back to your notes on binomial expansions uh, and revise that work here. Having the, the trig stuff in there and having the minus does make it, there's an additional level of cognitive load stuff in your brain that you have to um, get out of your working memory. Um, so hopefully that's something which you can um, content yourself with as we go along. All right, now when I have a look at this, I know it's messy, but it's actually really encouraging because number one, I've dealt with all the binomial coefficients. Number two, everything is in terms of cosines, which is, um, that is what I was, what I was hoping for, right? Uh, it looks like the difference between this and the line that I've got is just collecting like terms. There's a bunch of cos to the power of six alphas, a bunch of cos to the power of four alphas, and I just need to arrange them, okay? Now I need more colors here, so I'm gonna do this um, so that I can uh, you know, expand this out nicely and identify the right terms. So I'm getting, cos to the 6 alpha here, minus 15 cos to the 4 alpha. Um, I've already multiplied and expanded this guy here. And then, let's have a look. So 15 cos squared alpha is going to be multiplied by all three terms in here, in these red brackets. So, the first one will give me 15 cos squared alpha, because I'm multiplying by 1. Then I've got 15 times minus 2, so that gives you minus 30. And when I look at the powers, it's cos to the power of 4 alpha. And then the last one um, will be 15 cos to the power of 6 alpha. And I get that from this multiplied by this term. Okay, for the next one, um, I don't have any... Uh, big number coefficients. I just have to take care of this minus. It's just going to flip everything around. So I'm going to get a minus 1 plus 3 cos squared alpha minus 3 cos to the 4 alpha plus cos to the 6 alpha. I'll just double check. Um, I've reversed that sign to this has become positive, this has become negative, this has become positive. Happy times. All right. Now, like I said, I need more colors. So I'm looking for my cos of the six alphas and collecting them in like terms. So um, here's the first one. Here is the second one. Uh, here is the third one. And then here is the fourth one there. Um, and so you can see I'm going to get, um, whoopsie daisy, uh, just sort of preempting what my working will be. There's 30 of them here and then an extra two. So that's 32 and when I look, that's a relief that I've expanded everything correctly and it seems like I'm on the right track. Um, so I'll write that in orange shortly. Um, I also have, uh, oh, we'll do it in this. Um, I've got cos to the power of four alphas. So here's one, there's one. Uh, here's another one. And then my last one is over here. So having a look at that, um, they're all negative. So uh, minus 15 and then minus 30 is minus 45. Uh, and then minus three again is minus 48. So again, have a check things are looking good. Uh, and then the rest of the terms, I, I think we should be able to manage because there aren't nearly as many of them, okay? So I promised I'd write this in orange because I've highlighted in orange. How many cos to the six alphas have I got? Uh, we said 32. So 32 cos uh, to the six alphas. Um, let's go to green next. So how many cos to the fours? I think we said it was 48 cos to the four alphas, and then we'll switch back to our normal cover color. How many uh, cos squareds are there? There's 15, there's three, so I'm getting 18. And then there is one solitary constant term, minus one. So on the left-hand side, we had cos six alpha from memory, because you can see it there from the real part of the left-hand side. 32, minus 48, 18, negative one, minus one, uh, it all checks out. So um, that's always good to know that we've actually done it all correctly. And so I'll just conclude that. Whew. Take a breath. So uh, that was uh, the first stretch uh, we have done, the use of De Moivre's theorem. We've taken care with our trigonometric identities, done our expanding, um, and it looks good. We've gotten to the result that was required.